Welcome to this short tutorial on the VFL 2019 Data Visualization Dashboard. On accessing the dashboard, the first screen you see is the summary screen, which displays the high level survey information, including the total number of responses, the number of countries involved, the number of communities surveyed, and the number of partner organizations involved in collating the data. Hovering over the countries on the map, shows the number of valid surveys completed in each country and the date the data was last refreshed. The arrow buttons at the bottom of the screen are used to navigate through the dashboard. The second screen provides more detail about the survey contributions. The total number of respondents, per survey, is shown on the right of the screen, while on the left, the total is shown for each country. The data for each country can be expanded, to break down the data further, by partner organization. This screen visualizes threats encountered by communities, along with the associated consequences, the actions that can be taken to mitigate them, and any barriers to implementation. Each respondent was asked to list what they perceive the top three priority threats to be to their community, and the results were aggregated. The screen is interactive. By clicking a threat in the top chart, the consequences, actions and barriers linked to that threat are updated. The list of threats is sorted by number of responses. Flooding is the most prevalent threat identified across all surveys globally, but as you scroll down you will see the full list. Once a threat has been selected, to deselect it, simply click it again. This is the same throughout the dashboard. On the left-hand side of the screen is the filter pane. You will see this on most of the screens in the dashboard. It enables you to further filter the data by different criteria. We will look at each one in turn. By default, all countries are selected, but by deselecting all, and then selecting a single country, you can view data for that country. You can select multiple countries to show their combined data. Clicking the eraser icon above a filter will clear it. The community filter works in a similar way. The drop down shows all risk areas and their communities in alphabetical order. Some names are too long to be displayed in full, but hovering the mouse over an option will show the full name. The urban, rural filter, displays data on those communities designated as either urban or rural. The respondent type allows you to contrast responses between local government officials, civil society representatives, and members of the community. Community respondents include people surveyed either as part of a community consultation, or a household survey. These filters, relate only to community respondents. This particular question about threats, was not asked in the random household survey, therefore selecting men, for example, will only display results from the men community consultation groups. Selecting two options, men and elderly for example, shows those respondents flagged as both men, and, elderly. Because the community consultation groups were focused on either men, or women, or elderly, or youths, or people with disability separately, selecting men and elderly in this instance will not return any results. To see the data from both men or elderly, you need to filter out the other groups by setting them to no. To clear all the filters on a page, and restore it to its original view, click Reset Filters from the top of the pane.
The Trends Over Time screen visualizes how respondents perceive disaster losses to have changed over the last 5 to 10 years, ranging from decreased significantly to increased significantly. It also shows what they believe the most significant threats facing the younger generations will be in the future. This question was asked in each of the surveys, and so unlike the previous screen, the community respondent filter includes both community consultations and household surveys. On this screen, are the results of six questions asked of civil society organizations, about their engagement with the local community. The key to the responses is shown at the top of the screen. As all the questions are only taken from the civil society organization survey, only the country, community and urban, rural filters are applicable. This screen also looks at approaches to community engagement, but this time by government. It differs from the previous screen, in that it asks about government engagement from the perspective of local government, civil society organizations, and community respondents, and so you can compare the different perceptions. Here we can view the results of questions about structures, policies, mechanisms, resources, and access to information that contribute to environments for inclusion. The questions come from different surveys, and so the filters can be used to disaggregate the information. These two questions were asked of respondents across all the surveys, and the responses were free form, i.e. not selected from a list. The 100 most common responses are shown for both questions. This screen visualizes different questions asked across different respondent groups, all relating to coherence. Because the same questions were not asked in each survey, filtering by respondent type, will return some blank values where that question was not asked of that group. The final screen shows results of ecosystem questions. Only the third question was asked across all respondent groups, the first, second and fourth charts just show results of questions asked in the household survey. We hope you found this short tutorial useful. Don't forget, the dashboard is updated, as new data is added, so check back regularly to see the most up-to-date VFL data.